and rolling. <clears throat> All right, um, I want to welcome everyone for our special meeting of the agenda for tonight, September 4th, 2018. It's about 7.30. And a call to order. Can you have a roll call, please? Okay. Um, <coughs> Director um, Harvey? <laughs> Here in Truckee, California. Okay. Uh, Director Slater Carter? Present. Director Boyd? Here. Director Wilson? Here. Director Hubert? Here. Okay, well, I want to welcome everyone, and I have nothing to say tonight. And for um, oral comments on items not on the agenda, do I have anyone who wishes to present on items that's not on the agenda? Hearing none. Um, <clears throat> there is no public hearing tonight. Uh, we have a consent agenda. I have uh, 10 items. Uh, the items are approved minutes for July 11, 2018. Approved the financial statements for July 2018. Approved the warrants for September 1, 2018. SAMFO report for June and July. Monthly review of the current investment portfolio. Connection per permit application is received. Monthly water production report for July 2018. The rain report, which would be comical. The solar energy report. And the monthly public agency retirement service report for May 2018. Are there any items any of you wish to pull from the consent agenda? <coughs> Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Jim, I, I'm assuming, well, I do, do a roll call for all Aye. of you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we do. All right. Yeah. I guess we need a roll call. Okay. Make this a formal. Uh, Director Harvey. <coughs> Say hi one more time, Jim. <laughs> 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 Director Slater Carter. Aye. Director Boyd. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Huber. Aye. All right. It passes 5 0. All right. We get to start off tonight with a very interesting subject, and that is review and possible action concerning the district participation in a research project quantifying fog, precipitation, and contribution to the local aquifer recharge on Montero Mountain. I'd like to have the same report on what it's like when I arrive at 5 in the morning. But short of that, who gets the honor of All right, well, let me, let me just introduce this item here. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going to try to prove two things true that we know we have plenty of. One is fog, and the other one is smart people in the community. Um, we have, uh, since a number of years, actually already some fog collectors on the uh, property down here. And uh, there the SF State um, Geography Department is looking actually at some qualitative ex aspects of the fog water along the California coast. And I think this actually now extended uh, pretty much worldwide. I think they have stations in <coughs> South Africa and uh, somewhere in Australia also, looking at what, what, what makes up fog really, what's in fog. Um, and uh, through, through those contacts with this group, um, we, actually, we actually put a lot of effort already into um, raising the question about uh, how much fog is actually uh, precipitating on Montero Mountain. It's a very unique situation. We have our own little water cycle, and um, we know there's a lot of humidity in the air around here, and uh, <coughs> how much of that is actually uh, ending up in our um, tanks, really, in our drinking water tanks. Uh, that was a question that we um, were always interested in, and um, we also did a little bit, uh, we looked at this a little bit ourselves to get just an understanding um, and now we are fortunate enough that we were contacted by uh, Professor Emeritus Dr. Sergio Aragon, and he's also at the SF State University. And he started a research project that really investigates the amount of fog water produced directly here in Montero. <coughs> and uh, also the involvement of plants, and um, ultimately then also the contribution of that fog water to local aquifers. And uh, so we thought this would be a good idea actually to, to join efforts a little bit. And um, so what we're really asking for is that 
Um, we're, again, we're already sampling, uh, taking a lot of water samples. <coughs> uh, also, some I, we do, did a lot of isotope sampling on our wells already uh, in the in the Montera aquifers and the deep water aquifers and shallow water aquifers as well. And uh, so, to better understand, really. Um, Ultimately, the water balance for this area, we're suggesting to amend a little bit our sampling plan that we have for the coming three years and do this in conjunction with uh, um, Mr. Aragon and, of course, Balance Hydrologics. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. have this discussion. We have already some suggestions on how this could work. And um, what this would do for us is really that we would benefit from uh, his work that is directly looking at a question that, that we're really interested in. And uh, so the recommendation is to authorize the district manager to spend uh, not more than $3,000 in the coming three fiscal years on samples and equipment for the research project. And we have Sergio here, and I think you probably can talk a little bit better about what the project actually is and what, what, what the question is that you're trying to answer. In, if, if I can, oh, where's our microphone? We have a microphone? What happened yeah. to it? Oh. It's, or, you know, it's the, the, meet, the meetings are recorded, so to get, the, to get the audio better, we always ask everyone to get up to the microphone. So come up here and talk a little bit about what you're doing. <clears throat> Let's see. Is it on? Uh, yeah, it's, it's on. Yeah, it, it goes on. through the TV. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, let me tell you about the uh, FOG research project that I've started up on Montero Mountain. Um, this is uh, an initiative that uh, I took on my own. I retired several years ago from San Francisco State, and I just can't stop asking questions. And so since I live here for 20 years now, um, <clears throat> I wanted to understand the fog and the water situation here. So I requested uh, permission from the National Park Service that operates you know, the GGA NRA land up there in Rancho Corral de Tierra. Uh, to install some fog collecting equipment up on Montero Mountain. Uh, they uh, kindly said yes, and so I built the equipment and installed it um, around April, May, uh, the main equipment. So uh, there are two sites on Montero Mountain along Alta Vista Trail that uh, are equipped to collect fog. The fog collectors are pretty much, uh, they're just a slight <laughs> modification of what you have here on the property. So one square meter standard uh, mesh uh, area collection. And uh, counting the one here, we have a, an elevation transect of around say 20 feet here, uh, 200 feet at my roof, 800 feet uh, f lower site in Alta Vista, 1200 feet. Uh, uh, upper elevation site. So the equipment that's set up there to capture fog uh, with these meshes and also from drip from the scrub uh, with some ground-based uh, collectors and a meteorological data temperature and so forth is going to provide um, a lot of data regarding the amount and seasonality of the fog. And since the equipment will be up there also during the rainy season, we will also be able to get uh, data from rainwater, which turns out to be quite uh, easily distinguishable from fog when you look at the isotope composition of these waters. So uh, after I uh, got this permit, I went to San Francisco State and I knew some of the people in that geography department, and so I told them about this project, and I said, do you guys want to piggyback, uh, given any of your research interests, and use this? And I already knew that Jerry Davis was interested in a geological transect uh, <coughs> measuring uh, soil decomposition up there. So uh, he was on board, and he's going to carry out some of those measurements. 
Um, I also met Sarah Bagaskas, who uh, is interested in uh, collaborating with Peter Weiss at UC Santa Cruz to study uh, lichen because it is a good proxy uh, for the accumulation of mercury compounds that originate from the surface waters of the ocean. Uh, in addition, uh, Dan Fernandez, uh, who has collaborated here before with, uh, he's at uh, CSU uh, Monterey Bay, uh, who's collaborated with Andrew Oliphant uh, for setting up the instrument uh, here. Um, and he was uh, my advisor on how to build these things because um, I, never, I never had done that before. So at any rate, there is a, there is a team. There's also uh, Leora Nanis at the Geography Department who is gonna be studying um, the macronutrients in the fog water. So um, my major, I'm the PI of the project. <coughs> There is no funding from any funding agency. Uh, when I joke about it, I say that the funding comes from the Bank of Aragon in Montera. <laughs> okay, it's, it's right over here in my back pocket. Um, so, um, uh, all the equipment that's up there right now, I, uh, I uh, finance myself. Uh, with a little help from Sarah, who gave me some extra instrumentation uh, out of her own research grant. So at any rate, there is a broad section of different things that will be studied. Uh, but obviously one of the things that is of interest to this district is the, um, what can be learned from the fog uh, and rainwater isotopic composition. So um, water uh, comes in several different weights because oxygen itself has two stable isotopes, oxygen 18, the heavier one, which is um, present in small amounts, uh, naturally, does not decay. Uh, and also hydrogen has a heavier isotope uh, called deuterium, which is also stable and does not decay. So these species of water molecules that are a little heavier uh, have different physical chemical properties. So the uh, the weight in itself says that when these uh, water molecules are in the vapor, the rate at which they flit around randomly uh, at a given temperature it differs for the heavier molecules compared to, to the lighter ones. And so therefore, there are fractionation processes, i.e. you end up uh, having uh, different amounts of the isotopes depending on the history of the sample. Um, in addition, because uh, of the differences in the way molecules interact with each other, it takes a little bit more energy to evaporate the heavier water molecules than the lighter ones. So the processes of evaporation also fractionate, i.e. generate differences. So uh, without further details, the basic thing to notice is that the uh, Water that gets precipitated is depleted in the heavier isotopes to varying degrees depending on its source. Uh, in rain, it's depleted uh, a large amount, um, a number that you could have in your mind is, um, which comes from data at uh, Point Reyes because there are no measurements of, uh, yet in Montana Mountain, even though I have water samples already collected, uh, is about minus, uh, s minus seven uh, parts per thousand depletion. <coughs> that could be characteristic of rain, whereas fog is only slightly depleted, about minus 2.8 or so. So there's a very large difference, and these differences can be, I mean, these values can be measured very precisely uh, to within just uh, around one or two percent by various different techniques. And so it is quite easy to distinguish um, between uh, what's rainwater, what's fog water, and what's groundwater in terms of these uh, composition variables. The groundwater is uh, fairly depleted, but not as much as rain here, according to data that uh, Clemens showed me about uh, 10 days ago. 
um, that's about minus 5.7 or so. So therefore, since it's not as depleted as water, then there is the implication that there is a contribution from fog water uh, that goes into uh, the aquifer here. So um, we'd like to be able to uh, get data that's local because these variables depend on the temperature and uh, it's only an approximation to use numbers from uh, 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 Point Reyes, for example. <coughs> so with that in mind, uh, then I came to talk with Clemens and, and told him uh, what I would propose in order to uh, study the issue of the influence of fog water in the in into the uh, groundwater here in this area. So the idea was to first determine if there were seasonal variations uh, in the um, groundwater and also the Montana Creek water, which very interestingly has an isotopic composition very similar to that of groundwater, even though the spring is comes to the surface, right? Um, so uh, taking those uh, uh, two uh, different sources of water uh, into consideration where the samples would be provided by the district, I would process them and send them to the University of New Mexico along with the fog water samples. Uh, a couple times a year, I collect them and freeze them so as to not spend too much money on shipping uh, charges. Um, the University of New Mexico has an isotope lab that uses a, um, a technology that enables simultaneous detection of both isotopes from the same sample, and therefore it costs half as much as uh, for equivalent precision from what you would attain from, say, UC Berkeley Isotope Lab or the UC Davis Isotope Lab, where they uh, use mass spectrometry as the high precision measurement um, methodology. So, at any rate, uh, since the Bank of Aragon is hurting, I thought I'd ask if uh, the Montana Sanitary District would uh, be interested enough to pay for the isotope analysis and one little instrument to measure uh, the electric conductivity of the water samples as well as the pH. Those two measurements also tell us something about the influence of salt uh, that comes from the nearby ocean. Uh, and um, we might even be able to detect something going on with smoke from the fires. Not clear. Uh, this is a brand new subject, uh, the smoke from the fires. So at any rate, uh, that's, ba that's the basic idea. Uh, and uh, my permit for studying this goes through 2020. And this is the time period in which I will be involved in this. Uh, so the bottom project. line is that you're asking for support from the district over three years for a total of $3,000 for the measuring of the isotopes from the University of New Mexico? Uh, it's actually less than that. That was an approximate number, but... 3,000 3, what's in the recommendation from Clemens. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to support it, okay. but I have a couple questions. And let Please. Me, is there a quiz? Let, let me just... Uh, a quiz? Let me just talk no. a little <laughs> bit about what Dwight said. Uh, the way I see this is, again, that... Um, this is, benefiting the, this is benefiting the district. We already started doing some of this work. Um, and uh, so from, from the district's perspective, this is really just a mere changing of the already existing uh, sampling <laughs> schedule in cooperation uh, with Sergio. So it's, it's really just, you know, um, yes, there will be some exchange of money, but ultimately we're paying for the samples that we're also using. Okay. And I, equipment. I so. strongly support this. Um, I think the more information we have about our own water, and frankly the, the constituencies that make up our water, um, I, we've done age dating on some of our water in the past, and. Um, I just think that gathering more information, having a stronger 
a database on which to examine things is ultimately valuable, and this is not a thousand dollars a year <coughs> is um, a very small amount, uh, three dollars a day, and uh, divided among all our households, it's a fraction of a cent. So I, I think it, um, it it works financially, but I think in terms of, of gathering information about our own water, we have one of the more interesting water districts in the in our area because we are totally self-reliant, and so the more we can figure out about our water, where it comes from, what it's made up of, I I think it's of value. We're probably going to be required to participate in a grossly expensive uh, groundwater project that we uh, do not need and that the experts who are involved with it are objecting to. Um, and in fact, the water agencies that are involved have, have all um, taken a, a unified position that the change in status of the groundwater basin was in error. And maybe this will add a little bit more information to show them, I don't know, uh, that we are independent of, of a whole lot of, of other uh, influences. So I, I just think we should do it, and as long as there's no major quiz on board members about isotopes and so on, I can go for it. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Okay, I have a second. Oh, oops, I don't know who did it. Bill did. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? I, I just do have one quick question, though. Uh, so this will go on for approximately two years. Uh, will that be enough time to collect data to be able to draw conclusions? <laughs> Well, I, I hope so. Um, the, I, I will have data on three separate years. Yeah. Okay, 98, uh, I mean, 08, 09, and 10. Okay. Uh, and uh, by looking at the published literature, uh, other studies have typically studied one or two years. So actually three is more than that's normally done. Okay. Uh, these fog studies have been carried out in like I mentioned, for example, north of us, also south of us, uh, and Big Sur area, for example. So there is uh, a, a good amount of literature on this. Uh, and uh, I should mention also that uh, yesterday I had visiting uh, Montero Mountain and the sites, uh, Dr. Alicia Torregrosa, who is at the USGS. I think she's maybe known to you. Uh, as well. Uh, she's no longer working on FOG because of the changes at USGS, um, but she's a very useful uh, source for all kinds of uh, interesting things. I have to admit, however, right off that, you know, I am a chemical physicist, not a meteorologist, uh, and not, it, FOG is new to me, okay? But the basics uh, that one needs to understand is all physics. Uh, so I'm a good learner. Yeah, don't disqualify yourself. Oh, no, I, <laughs> I, I think you're, yeah. your focus on fog uh, reflects your, your, uh, your specialty. Um, I, everything else I've seen about fog has to do with other you know, larger scale aspects of it. So this is very interesting. I have one more question. There's going, right now there's a lack of sunspots. So it's changing the, the temperatures. Um, in comparison, so are you going to be comparing the amount of fog um, from this study and other studies? Are you going to be able to see how these kinds of, like you say, the meteorolog meteorological differences affect fog. I've lived here long enough to remember some spectacular summers where I could grow tomatoes. Other summers where I could grow mildew mm -hmm. and not much else. And um, I had never quite correlated in with solar sunspots, but it's, um, 
it seems that the cooler temperature and the cooler ocean, we may not get quite as much fog as, but I don't know for sure. Well, uh, let me say something. Um, first of all, the uh, effect of the sunspots on the output of the sun is minuscule. Uh, it's like on the order of 0.1%. Oh, okay. So, um, and it's going in the opposite direction of warming. Um, so, the major uh, issues are the changes in circulation of the planet due to the excessive blanket of CO2 that we've not now put mm -hmm. on the uh, Earth. And those changes in circulation are the ones that are, are altering, you know, the um, balance of heat flow from the Arctic uh, uh, to here. And um, locally, this means um, that we have probably warmer temperatures in the valley. And you can imagine uh, air rising massively in the valley, you know, bringing in uh, air to replace that rising air from the coast. That's been the general mechanism of why there's fog on the coast along all of California because of the geometry of the Central Valley. So how all those uh, features will be changed because of the changes in the jet stream and so forth and uh, the dissipation of heat you know, from uh, the tropics you know, to north uh, and so on will affect how much fog there is here. Uh, this is something that I don't think anybody is modeling specifically, um, but the advantage we have is that there are these geostationary satellites, the GOES satellites, uh, that sit above us and watch the fog. They have been doing so for uh, more than 15 years. Um, and they recently, just last year, produced the first 10-year, you know, study report uh, on the uh, cloud cover on the coasts. And uh, Alicia Torregrosa was uh, very much involved in that study. So they are going to complete in just a few more years, the next decade. Uh, so those satellites are the ones that are going to give us, you know, the basic data uh, about what actually is happening. Uh, whether it's, whether somebody is going to actually go ahead and do a computer model uh, in our relatively small region to be able to predict what's going to happen here in the future is not clear. My sense is that perhaps our fog is not going to be uh, going away too soon um, because of this heat effect from the Central Valley. Uh, the surface temperatures on the ocean, so whether there's El Nino and La Nina and those sorts of things, also have a big effect because that that tells us how much of uh, of the water can easily evaporate uh, from the ocean and so forth. I also have uh, an eight kilowatt um, uh, solar system on my roof, uh, from which I get information on, you know, the sun how much sun I'm getting, uh, and I've had that system uh, operating for five years. So uh, I also have data on how much fog there is, and it's amazing that sometimes one, for example, I was feeling this is a foggier summer, this particular one, and when I look at the data, it doesn't look like it was an especially foggy summer compared to others. Uh, that I've had. So anyway, database is way better than... 94 was a foggy summer. Yes. That's, that's the year I moved in. Uh, uh, during nothing but clear weather, moved in and it stayed foggy for four months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I was when, when, you were, when you were naming uh, folks uh, that, that you've talked to about this, I, I just don't recall. Did you mention Dr. Gerdak? Uh, he had a student in 2013 who did a fog study. Uh, it's part, part of, I think, uh, master's work, uh, and it focused on, on this area. So, and he's up at state, so it might have. Uh, I say the name again, please. Uh, I think it's Gerdak, G-U-R-D-A-K. Is that the name of the student? Or the no, that's the that's the professor. He was the advisor. The student. Uh, at, what, at San Francisco State. Yeah. 
What well, year was that? Just in the list of projects, I've just searched Fog in San Francisco State. Uh -huh. and uh, it seemed to focus on this area. That might be of interest. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I'll have to look that up. Very interesting work. I got interested in the fog years ago when, when there was all the talk about putting a freeway over the mountain. And uh, mm -hmm. Bill and Peggy Bechtel uh, kept uh, a log of, of you know, just observations on a, on a daily basis for quite a long time as part of that. Uh, they're still here in town last I checked. Uh, and let me just put in a word. Uh, I keep a link on Montero.com to the GO satellite image uh, so you can tell how far you have to go to get some sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, for the longest time I worked at home and uh, yeah, love the fog, but man, every now and then you need some rays. Yes, yes, you, you do. You software to do that. Huh? Well, just uh, look at the picture and you go, I can drive to Lindemar Valley and be in the sun and be great. That's a, that's a step. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. uh, I think you have the unanimous consent. Yeah. Um, is there any objection to the request? I don't. Do we need to do a roll call, Dave? Or oh, we do have a motion. Do we have a motion? And a second. And a second. All right. Let's do a roll call. Okay. Uh, Director Harvey. Aye. Uh, Director Slater Carter. Aye. Director Boyd. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Huber. Aye. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interest and thank you for involving us. I'll be talking to Klaus then from now on. We'll look forward to some results. All righty. You thank will get some, so good evening. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You. More sun, I think, is what Scott wants. <laughs> <laughs> more fog and more sun. No way. On the boat. On the same day. Okay, uh, second item is review and possible action concerning bid award for AW3 rehabilitation project. Women's? All right, so um, I think we've uh, reported enough about the airport well uh, rehab project that's not only taking care of the well and the above ground structures, but also adding a, an ion exchange unit very similar to what we have at the airport well number two. And um, so we went out to bid on this uh, for this project or for the major portion of this project and we received one bid um, and uh, that was from Pump Repair Services Company uh, of San Francisco and that's in the amount of 170,060. Now it is close enough to the engineer's estimate, the engineer's estimate is uh, just below that. So the recommendation is to award the construction of the contract to Pump Repair Services Company in the amount of $170,000 for the airport well number three we have project. Now, you, uh, you kind of have an interesting thing here that says, uh, I see a resolution and I see a recommendation for Board of Public Information only. So is this a resolution? Or a no, this, this, was, this is copy and paste error on the bottom here. There's two recommendations. Let's okay. stay with the first one on top, um, which is an action item. So again, it's the action to um, award the contract and also um, adopt resolution um, of the Montero Water and Sanitary District accepting bid for the airport three rehab project, declaring lowest responsible bid for said work, approving and authorizing execution of agreement for said work. Okay. Actually, I think we have a revised resolution. Uh, yeah, um, Mr. President, yes. I do recommend the adoption of two resolutions. Uh, ah. The first one would be uh, Resolution uh, of Montero Water Center District approving contract documents for the AW3 Airport Number well, 3 Rehabilitation Project, declaring lowest responsible bidder for the said project, accepting bid of said bidder, rejecting all other bids, approving and authorizing execution of agreement for the project, and directing return of security deposits upon execution of the project contract by the lowest responsible bidder. That's one resolution. The second one is Resolution of the Montero Warner Sanjay District acknowledging and authorizing the filing of notice of exemption under the California Environmental Quality Act for the AW3 Airport Well Number 3 Rehabilitation Project. You can take both of those in the same motion. Okay. Can we have so a motion, please? Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call vote, please. Okay. Uh, Director Harvey? Uh, aye. Director Slater Carter? Aye. Director Boyd? Aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Huber? Aye. I think we have a five nothing vote here. I'm having a little trouble with your 
your websites just aren't working very efficiently. There we go. I just have to scroll, scroll, scroll. All right, the next item is review and possible action concerning adoption of appropriation limits for fiscal year 2018-2019. All right, thank you, Dwight. So this is a standard item that we have up every year. The California State Constitution uh, requires us to um, adopt the appropriations limit or GAN limit. Uh, it ultimately looks at how much property tax we're receiving and are making sure that that this is not that we're not receiving too much property tax. Um, there's a calculation. What goes into it is mainly how much we spent on capital projects. Uh, so after calculation, um, so the calculation currently shows that appropriation limit for this fis for, for the prior fiscal year was two million two hundred thousand. So we're way below that. And um, the uh, new GAN limit for this current fiscal year is $2.294 million, uh, million, dollars, $2 million. So um, we're essentially $1.8 million dollar below the GAN limit. Um, so the recommendation is to adopt the resolution of the Montero Water and Sanitary District determining the 2018-19 appropriations limit. Okay. Can we have a motion, please? So, second. Second. Any discussion? This is a, a fun parade thing we have to do every year if I recall. Uh, roll call vote, please. Okay. Uh, Director Harvey? Aye. Director Slater Carter? Aye. Director Boyd? Uh, aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Hubert? Aye. Okay, review and possible action concerning employee wellness program. Yeah, so this is something that we introduced last year. Um, it's a wellness program for the full-time employees of the district. Uh, the district contributes $25 monthly towards a health or fitness facility of their choice. Uh, and that's upon proper documentation by the employee of the expenditure. Um, we again received a grant for a wellness grant, it's over $280, uh, $280 uh, from Aqua, Aqua JPIA, that's the Association of California Water Agencies. And um, so we're, so just some statistics in the past year, we, the district spent $675 on the program. If all employees participate and ask for the full monthly reimbursement, uh, the annual cost would run to $1,820. So um, our recommendation is, again, to authorize up to $1,820 of district funds for contributions to MWSD full-time employees' particip uh, participation in the wellness activities of $25 per month per employee after proof of payment by the employee. Okay. Uh, discussion or motion either way? I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call, please. <coughs> okay. Uh, Director Harvey? Aye. Director Slater Carter? Aye. Director Boyd? Aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Huber? Aye. Passes this five mm -hmm. Okay. Review and possible action concerning adoption of ordinance relating to sewer service charges. Back to you, please. All right. So we recently. Um, uh, actually adopted new, new sewer service charge rates. Uh, the rates are now shown actually in a, a more industry standard way than before. Before we actually showed a, a rate that was specific only for the wet weather months and then um, uh, in, increase the consumption by a factor of three to assume that that is spread over the entire year. Uh, now we're ultimately uh, dividing that sum by three, um, just in layman's terms. So uh, we're, we're ultimately assessing now an annual sewer service charge and not a wet weather month uh, sewer service charge. However, we still consider the wet weather months as the basis for the sewer service charges. Nothing really is changing. Um, uh, what it does require, however, is cleaning up the district code and council prepared now a uh, draft ordinance, ordinance of the Montero Water and Sanitary District amending section 4-2100, uh, 
of the Montero Water and Sanitary District Code relating to sewer service charges. Um, so recommendation is to approve the ordinance. Okay, um, any discussion or a motion, please? I'll make the motion and I will thank Summers for, uh, and Dave for putting this in a more industry standard, more comparable and transparent uh, way of discussing this over the decades we've had a whole lot of discussion about who has the highest or the lowest water rates, sewer rates, whatever rates, trash rates, service, and um, consistency in the industry is certainly an important uh, way of getting things across to the folks and uh, communicating the good job that we're doing. Um, oh, and I want to thank you for the banner out front. Oh. Yeah. I hadn't driven by, and we need another one right across. Just no, right we actually wanted to take it off and put it here, but um, okay. we'll have that at the second next meeting. I'm sorry, I shouldn't yeah. be changing the subject. Exactly. Anyway, so moved. Stay focused. We'll second. We got a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, can we have a roll call, please? Okay. Uh, Director Harvey. Aye. Director Slater Carter. Aye. Director Boyd. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Huber. Aye. This next one is really almost humorous, but we're going to have to do it anyway. Now it is. <laughs> so we're done. Forget it. We're done. Uh, anyway, just keep it. Keep we got the camera. I want to make sure we're professional up here. Review and possible action concerning cancellation of next regular <laughs> scheduled meeting, which is Thursday. Uh, September 6, 2018. Yeah, and I think this this meeting was already canceled, but this is up for the public's information, really. I thought we well, had discussed this last time. And I, I will um, comment that the reason, one of the reasons for this change is this board will be mediating the lawsuit brought by Half Moon Bay against Sewer Authority Midcoastside, Montera, and Granada. And so there is a mediation going on in a, a um, hope that we can reach some form of agreement. But it was asking uh, an awful lot to have a board meeting after spending a day in mediation. So that's why we have switched things around. And I can assure you that the two individuals to my right would be useless after all day mediation at the board meeting. <laughs> I just appreciate useless. that vote of confidence. Thank you. Thank you, Blake. Well, I have uh, complete you. vote of confidence. I just know after all day of mediation, it turned into jelly. So, just uh, for uh, I don't know if you thought about this, but perhaps a kind of a larger sign out front that no meeting tonight. We had one a couple of days ago, too late, or you missed it. Might be a for <laughs> someone who comes up and shakes the lock gate for all the crowds that show up. It's you know, lose here, so you know. Um, <laughs> we may have to give you the title of the right. crowd. Maybe I need to bring this meeting in order too before it just. Well, you said something about getting professional up here. Oh, so yeah. So it's, sorry, it's only natural. Lost my, lost my control here. Mm -hmm. All right, we're two reports. Uh, anyway, no meeting on Thursday. Um, the next one is the Sam report, Scott. I'm uh, not being Jim was uh, there. Well, Jim, well, Scott's here. So, Jim, unless you have anything to add, I'll give it to Scott and you can. You know, that was last yeah, year. Yeah, they're fine. Go ahead, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Jim. Yeah, I, I needed you to stall for like 30 seconds more so I could pull up the agenda. Um, that was last week. It's been a long time since then. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, we had a, uh, we had our auditor present uh, the audit. Uh, as you're probably aware, there was some concern expressed in the audit. I think it comes down to um, uh, th there were there were some issues that we had last year that were uh, what appear to be bookkeeping errors that just compounded, caused a lot of consternation. Those seem to be settled out. Uh, the auditor had no real problem with how things are looking now. Uh, now that those things have been identified and cleaned up, um, was very concerned about the funding of the SAM reserves. This is something that uh, we have certainly been expressing, you know, putting voice to here. I think our board is, is very concerned about that as well. Uh, we have had a lot of trouble um, getting Half Moon Bay on board with putting money back into the reserves to bring them back up to the, the levels that we set as policy some time back. Um, but I'm pleased to report that uh, C 
six people at the board table and six people talked about how important it was to get the reserves back up to the right level. I'll take that as a win. Um, glad the auditor called it out. Uh, it's a pretty tough audit. I've, I've been, I've probably read 20 of those and 20 of the ones, ones here. And this one stands out. Um, it is an auditor who's new to our system and at a time when uh, the agency's going through the roughest of all the patches that we've seen. So um, some of it did not come as a surprise because we've had you know, the, uh, the big financial hits from the, the spills, the repairs, and the fines. Um, but I think it does put a pretty plain face on what we all know uh, has been a, a situation that we need to get a better handle on. And so it's, I think, going to be a useful tool to gain some consensus around the table that we actually have to uh, pay for keeping the, the agency running, which includes repairs and maintenance and procedures manuals and uh, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, Jim, did you have anything you wanted to add to that one? Um, no, no, Scott. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think just about all the rest of the time uh, at the meeting was spent in closed session. So I don't have any other items to comment on. I don't think we got to the uh, discussion about the repair for the, the fire line. Uh, is, there's a, there's a, a water pipeline line that serves as a, as a fire protection line. It runs through the backyard uh, of uh, a neighborhood that's directly adjacent to the district. Uh, or to the, to the sand plant, and houses apparently were built right up to that line. So the line started to leak, there's been some very uh, speedy repairs to that. We didn't get the report on how that, all that went, but we haven't heard the report to say that anything went badly. We just ran out of time. I think that's the full report. Okay. The Coast Council? Nothing to report. CSDA? Nothing. Attorney? Uh, just for information, uh, I'm a member of the Aqua Legal uh, Committee, and we have a committee meeting from time to time on requests for usually amicus support. I'll be attending by phone tomorrow morning uh, for a couple hours uh, with regard to reviewing a couple of cases that are uh, on the agenda. Okay. Uh, do you want to share us what cases you're reviewing? You said. Tomorrow's cases are they're talk they're aqua cases. Uh, actually, one of them is uh, involves uh, a system, sorry, system, a water system in Maui, and and the other one I think is uh, Stockton or the Central Valley, um, and so they're they're not cases that aqua is a is a party to. But the request is to get aqua support, institutional support for the position of the of the uh, water agencies involved. And one of them, the one from Maui, is pretty uh, interesting because the court had held that um, MPDS permits would be required for basically. Uh, Creek stream water systems without the without the uh, uh, necessarily disposal. And it, it's rather convoluted, but it's a rather uh, alarming uh, decision at the lower court level. So they're working their way up the top ladder. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned. Huh? All right. Director's reports. Anything? Jim, anything to report? Uh, no. Uh, it's uh, a fire started last night in it, 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 it an immigrant camp. So it's smoky here today. Uh, yeah, you haven't very, had good air, have you? No, it's smoky. Yeah. Come on, the general manager's report? Uh, nothing. Okay, we are going to go into closed session for a little bit, so I think we are done with open session unless we need to report out. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate you being here.